Monoclonal antibodies are antibodies, something we produce in our body, but antibodies that are produced in the laboratory that are allow that once you infuse them, you know, for, pass through your system and are designed to go out and attack COVID virus uh, in your system. And so they're indicated in anybody that has a COVID infection that has risk for progression to severe disease. And the goal is if we can give that antibody infusion early in the course of COVID, we can prevent people developing severe infection, needing to be hospitalized uh, or having other complications. So there are, the main indication for monoclonal antibodies are people that have proven COVID infection early on in the course of their disease, so ideally within the first week of infection, and have increased risk of severe disease. Who are those folks? Well, anybody that is an older adult, you know, 65 and older in particular is at high risk. Anybody that has chronic health conditions, heart, lung, liver, kidney disease, anybody that's got cancer or immune suppression, um, people of certain ethnic groups. Uh, we know that African Americans and other ethnic groups have had an increased burden of disease uh, and we can use monoclonal antibodies in those folks. And then people that are overweight. You don't have to be obese, but people that have a BMI of 25 or higher, so category of overweight, are also at increased risk and we want to give those folks monoclonal antibody to prevent progression. Monoclonal antibodies have been approved down to age of 12 now, so they can be given even into older children who fit into those higher risk categories to try to prevent progression. Uh, because as we know, with the Delta variant, we've had a number of kids that have ended up hospitalized with severe disease and even died from COVID. Well, there are a couple of different ways that uh, they can be given. You know, first of all, you have somebody that gets a positive test and then they can be referred for monoclonal antibody. The monoclonal antibodies can be given one of two ways. They can be given what we call subcutaneously, meaning an injection under the skin. It's a fairly large volume of fluid, so typically they'll give three or four injection sites, uh, squirt this, this liquid under the skin, and then your body absorbs it and gets those antibodies into the system. Or it can be given intravenously through, a, through an IV infusion uh, over an hour or so. My comment on ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine and bleach and high doses of vitamins and high doses of minerals are no, 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 and no. There is no evidence that any of those things are helpful either for prevention or treatment of COVID-19. And potentially you can have harms that come from doing those things. Bleach in particular, if you drink or ingest bleach, you can cause severe burns uh, that can be devastating. Ivermectin, particularly the veterinary formulation, is not safe in humans. It's at a concentration that's potentially very dangerous to humans. Uh, hydroxychloroquine given at high doses can cause heart conduction abnormalities and arrhythmias. Uh, and none of these uh, purported treatments have been shown to be effective. Well, it worked for me, what we call anecdotal medicine, um, really only tells you that you got better. It doesn't tell you that that medication made any difference whatsoever. There's no way to know uh, whether that had any benefit in you as an individual. And since we've got studies of a number of these things that have shown that they're not effective, done in a scientific way, you know, we've got evidence that they don't work. You know, some people say, well, there was a study of ivermectin that shows it was effective. The one study that many people point to has been withdrawn because there was shown to be academic fraud. You know, that was fraudulent results that ended up in a publication. It's since been withdrawn, but many people still point to that as a, a source of truth that's not true. Well, what I would recommend to anybody that has uh, COVID-19 or anybody that's had close exposure to COVID-19 that has high risks, if they're overweight, if they have sickle cell disease, if they have any chronic medical conditions, pregnant women, uh, and those that are, you know, within the first couple of weeks po postpartum, any people that are in those groups that have had a close contact that has COVID, or if they have COVID-19 symptoms, get tested. And 
Talk to your healthcare provider about whether you're a candidate for monoclonal antibody infusion. Um, we're able to do monoclonal antibody infusions here at UAMS for folks that are 16 and older. Children's Hospital is doing infusions for younger people, and there are a number of sites around the state that are able to give monoclonal antibody infusions. Our goal is to try to stop people from having severe COVID so that they don't end up in the hospital, so that they don't end up having uh, the need for critical care, intubation, or potentially have devastating consequences.